Hello, welcome to this Nuke8 video with the Foundry. My name is Matt Leonard and we're going to be looking at Nuke8's new text node in this video. Okay, so what you can see here in Nuke is a project I've put together just to show off some of the text capabilities that we now have in Nuke8. What you're seeing here, this graphic, all of this is created inside of Nuke8, including the kind of ribbon effects in the background, they're done with particles, we've got a number of 3D elements, along with all the text and outlines and things that are either created obviously with the text node or with the roto node. And all the animation again is also created inside of Nuke. So let's just stop this and go to the last frame and let's focus in on this central section. Let's say that we want to change the National League to maybe something to do with baseball for instance. So I'm just going to focus in on this part of my script and I'm actually going to delete that entire part out. But in fact let's not delete it, let's just move it over to the side in case we need it again later. I'm going to come in and I'm going to create the new text node. If you wanted to get it from the toolbar you'll find it under draw and text here. And I'm going to connect that into my merge node ready to go. Now the first thing you'll notice is the ability to write directly in the viewer. So if I was to view my text node and just click with the mouse, you can see we have a cursor now that enables us to begin typing immediately. So I could type for instance baseball and it appears directly in the viewer. Now what you can see has happened is that we've ended up with this box, almost like a bounding box around the text. And this enables us to control things like the justification, the top, middle, bottom settings of how the text sits within the box itself. Now if you want to, you can actually draw the box initially right at the beginning. And that's probably what we want to do for this instance because we want our text to sit within the actual red surround that we started with. So I'm just going to delete this text node. Let's view the merge so we can see the overall interface. Let's zoom in on this section here. And let's make a new text node again. We'll connect it as we did before into the merge node. But this time I'm going to click and drag a box out that's going to be around this part of the interface. Now I can come in and type directly either in the viewer again or over here in the properties panel. So I'm going to type for instance baseball league. Now obviously the font is too big for what we need so if I select it over here I can make initial changes directly in the properties panel of the size. So for instance I could drop it down to font size 25 or if I wanted I could come up to this new bar that we have in our viewer and using the virtual sliders I can just make some adjustments there. So you can see I can just adjust how big that is. And what's really nice is as it gets too big you can see it wraps around onto the next line and that's because it's hit the edge of this box that we've created. Now what we really want is this to be in the middle of the box. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to say justify to the center and also justify not to the top or the bottom but the center as well and that puts this nicely in the middle. Now I'm still feeling this is maybe a little bit too big, so let's just come across and type in by hand in the properties panel 25. Now what would also be nice would be if the letters were a different font. I don't really like this font too much. And we can do that directly in the properties panel here. So if I come up to font, you can see that I have now a list of all the fonts available to me on my machine. And we can read all types of fonts with this new system inside of Nuke. I'm going to come in and I'm going to choose one of the ones I'm using quite a lot at the moment, which is Open Sans. Now, from here, I can also choose what type of font with regards to whether I want it bold, italic, normal, etc. I quite like the light on this font, so I'm going to go with that. Now, from here, we may choose that we want to make individual changes to the overall kind of typeface, things like leading and kerning and things like that. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to say first off I would like the entire width of the font to be slightly larger. So I'm going to come in here to my width in my viewer and I'm just going to make uh, some changes. So I'm just going to stretch it out a little bit, maybe making it a width of 120. And I also may drop it in height just a little bit, maybe 95 is going to look quite nice here. Now I also have control up here for things like the kerning, the tracking and the baseline shift if I want to and I can do all those down here as well in the properties panel itself but I'm pretty happy with what we've got so far. Now if I wanted to I could actually make individual changes to each part of my text here. 
So I could, for instance, choose baseball, and I can actually adjust the font just of that. So I could come in and just adjust that. And you can see the baseball font is changing size, but the league remains the same. I'm going to keep them at the moment, both at 25. Now on top of this, we may choose to actually adjust individual characters. And we can do that by changing from our edit text mode into our transform mode. Now it's worth noting when you change to your transform mode, you're no longer able to type directly in the viewer. However, you still can type in the message area of the properties panel. So that's one constraint that you have when you change to the transform menu here. One of the benefits you get, however, is you're able to come and edit individual characters. So I can click on the B of baseball and you can see that I can actually move it directly around. So if I wanted to kind of go crazy and create some more stylized effects such as uh, this, probably not exactly what you would want, but you can really see the power of what we can do as we begin to adjust some of these fonts around. What's also nice is we can actually scale and rotate them just by positioning your mouse in different places around the box. So you can see I can rotate the letter making it 90 degrees. I could also stretch it both in width or in height. And if I want to go back to where I was, I can of course undo all the way back to where I was or just reposition it as I choose. So the transform is very powerful. Now the question you're probably asking is, that's all well and good, but can you actually animate that? Well, you can. So let's come into, say, frame 70. And let's, with this baseball B selected, let's move it across to the side and click this little key. This is our set key on current frame for the particular character that I've got selected. So I'm going to set a key. I'm going to move across to frame 90. And then I'm going to move it back roughly into position, somewhere like there. If I now return to frame 70 and press play, you can see that animation taking place. And that's going to affect not only the position, but the rotate and scale as well. So a very powerful system. I'm just going to come in and I'm going to delete that key. And I'm going to delete my key at 90 as well. That returns everything to roughly where it was. Now, if you wanted to animate more than just the character on its own, we could actually create a group. And in a group, we can add a number of characters. So for instance, I'm going to select, going back first to edit text, all of my baseball word, and I'm going to come in and say create group. And if I now move across to my group tab, you can see here I now have in my root transform my baseball. If I now select the league as well, and also say create group, we now have the league under the baseball, which is both part of the overall root transform. Now I'm able to come in and come to transform and you can see depending on where I am I can actually now select and edit the position scale and rotation of each individual set of characters within this group. So for instance if I wanted to rotate this around I could come to say frame 70, I could say set a key, I could now come to frame 90 and I could do a rotation of this all the way around. And now if I come back and play, you can see that. Okay, so there is our animation. Now if I wanted to see that animation as a curve, I can come to my curve editor. I can press F just to frame in and I can now see that exactly as you would expect. So I could select that and maybe press H for horizontal just to add a nice ease in and ease out. And as I open up my baseball, I can see I've got my rotation, scale and transform all available to me to edit individually. If I come up to my root transform, you can see I could also choose to animate all of that. So if I just scale out, you can see at the moment my pivot point is right up here. And if I wanted to, I could hold down command or control and just drag that down into somewhere in the middle, zoom back in. And now I could choose to animate all of that. So maybe at frame 70, I just may want to move it coming from above to below. So I could start here at the top, set a key. This time I could do it in the properties panel, set key. And at frame 90, I could now move that back into place roughly somewhere like there. And now if we come back to frame 70 and play, you can see that we have two lots of animation taking place. 
one is the group and one is the overall root transform okay so really powerful what we can do and we could obviously add individual character animation as well if need be for the time being I'm just going to come in and I'm going to delete the groups one and two and deleting the group you can see returns the text to its original position because it was the animation that was actually on the group not on the individual characters for that instance I'm also going to come to my root transform and I'm just going to set this back to its default position so set to default we'll return that to the middle position now we've talked about groups we've talked about editing and transforming individual characters we've talked about animation and all the ways in which we can adjust our text whether it be in size kerning leading etc what we haven't talked about however is color we can come over to our color section here and we can actually make changes to the color itself so at the moment we can see it's white so I might choose for instance to have a white to blue ramp across this text well I can come into ramp and I can say smooth zero I can zoom out and you can see that I have this zero position which I'm going to put over here on the right hand side and I also have this one position I'm going to put that on this side if I zoom back in at the moment you can see that we basically have white to kind of translucent what we want to do is we want to set this to be white all the way to blue so I'm going to set this firstly to show me the colors red green blue and alpha are all one and if I open up my color zero we can see that everything is at black including my alpha which is why this is kind of disappearing so I'm going to set first of all my alpha to one which will now mean that my alpha channel is solid all the way across this gradient if I now want cyan the easiest way would be to simply come into my color drop down and just make an adjustment here so we know cyan is green and blue so I'm going to go with mainly blue and a little bit of green to give me that kind of an effect if I wanted the gradient to go a different direction I could simply adjust my positions here getting it roughly lined up and you can see we now have a gradient facing in that direction or thereabouts okay so we have a lot of control over color a lot of control over the text and groups to help us organize everything now let's move back to our node graph and have a look at another feature that works very nicely with text which is the ability to add drop shadows so for this part I'm going to focus in on another area of my script so let's move back so we can view all of it I'm going to focus in on this section here I'm going to add a drop shadow to this live section up here and that we're going to find here in this text node now just through way of information the reason why I've got the word live in here is through a special little TCL script that I've added here in the label so if I open up this particular text node let's close our other one go to our node tab and you can see in here I've added square brackets value message square bracket and this basically says show me the value of this particular knob name and the knob name in this instance is message and you can see it there as I hover over it so anything I type in here is now going to appear down here in the bottom so I'm going to add as I said a drop shadow in this area so the way we do that is we come across to filters down to drop shadow that's going to go underneath and you can see that I can connect in either a background or an input normally if you want your drop shadow over a background that would obviously go in the background input and the text would go into the input here now the drop shadow actually works with any node that produces an alpha channel so the text is one way but you could also use it with rotos or other things like that for the time being obviously we want to look at this in conjunction with our text node so having created it and if I zoom in you can immediately see that we have a drop shadow and it's very straightforward to use we basically have the ability to adjust the overall opacity of the drop shadow so we can do that we can adjust the angle so we can just move the angle around until you're happy with where it is the distance away from the original alpha channel or the text in this instance the softness and also you can do shrink and expand which can be useful if you wanted to create an outline so let's have a look at how you could create an outline using this same system I'm just going to make my opacity 2 and I'm going to make the color just a yellow color so again I'm going to come in here 
and just go ahead and make this a yellowy color somewhere like that maybe a little bit darker let's close that up we're now going to set the angle to zero the distance to zero the softness to zero but we're now going to move the shrink expand up and you can see as I begin to do that we now get this nice little outline it's probably not as clear to see as we'd like so let's open up our text node select our text and maybe let's just adjust the spacing using the kerning so again middle mouse button down to use our virtual sliders I'm just going to stretch these apart so we can see them in a little bit more detail back to my drop shadow and again let's just increase that to maybe a value of 2 which is going to give us a very chunky outline but we can really quite clearly see it now if we wanted to come in and say we wanted it black now we could just make those adjustments here in the color and now we have a nice black surround using our new drop shadow node so from here I'm just going to home the view again let's zoom out and finally reconnect everything so we can see the full changes that we've made so that brings us to the end of this video looking at the new text node and also drop shadow in conjunction with it this has been Matt Leonard for The Foundry